On your newest album, Proof of Light, your debut for the great independent progressive label, Moon June Records, there's one particular song where you're playing a note that has a clean but powerfully sustaining tone, then suddenly it just starts feeding back and it octavates. Uh, for any experienced guitarists who are two amp aficionados like myself, <laughs> the transition kind of defies logic. How can you possibly get such a tone in effect without utilizing any conventional amplification behind your signal? Uh, can you demonstrate how it's done? Sure. Um, that's a sustainer. Um, it works a lot like guitar and amp feedback. So, um, I'd always love guitar amp feedback. When I used to use amps, I used to use feedback a, a lot. But it was always a problem for me because, um, you know, if you played a different venue, even with the same amp, it never behaved quite the same way, the feedback. And if the humidity or the temperature was different, it would change it again. And if you went somewhere where you had to hire an amp, um, you, you never knew what you were going to end up with in terms of feedback. So it wasn't something I could ever make a, a real integral part of my playing because it was too undependable and even if you had a good feedback setup it was still kind of not necessarily very dependable as anybody who's messed around with it knows but it was something i always loved so uh i thought i'd try a sustainer on my guitar and i put one on just thinking i'd give it a go and i switched it on and i never switched it off again i mean it was just like a revelation for me it was it was um what i'd always been hearing basically so if I hold the note down with the sustainer, it will just sustain. As long as I hold my finger on there. And the way it works is that I've got a conventional pickup here, which is just a Seymour Duncan, and that feeds the sustainer, which is here, which is by a company called Sustainiac. And what this does is it vibrates the string with the sound that comes from this pickup. So just like a conventional guitar amplifier, what happens is if the signal's loud enough and you're near enough the amplifier, the, the air vibration in the air revibrates the string and causes it to ring with its own sound and that creates the sound again going through the amp and it goes around in a circle and it feeds back. And it's exactly the same here, only it happens within the guitar. This pickup feeds the sustainer, which creates a magnetic field that revibrates the string which goes through the pickup and it goes around like that. And yeah, that's what it is. And the octave, the, the way it goes in an octave is simply that if I turn this knob here, it goes up an octave. I'm afraid that's deceptively easy to do. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, you'd think you were listening to someone playing through the sweetest tube amp you ever heard. So, um, yeah, it's a fa for me, it's fantastic. And the fact that I can sustain any note means I can do a lot with the note as it's sustaining. And as you know from my playing, John, a, a lot of what I do is, is to manipulate the, the note once it's sustaining. And so uh, it, was, it was perfect for me. It's not... Ideal for everyone, though, because you do have to uh, control the notes a lot. I mean, for one thing, especially on the low strings, but all of them really, there's quite a lot of energy on the string. Because there's a lot of vibration going on there. You have to get used to that. Not everybody gets on well with that kind of a feeling under their fingers. And also, um, you have to stop the string. So, you know, I, you can't expect the note to die away. You've got to decide when is it going to stop. So you either stop it with your left hand or your right hand, but you've got to kind of be aware of that stopping point and you can't just take your hand off the strings, it'll feed back and in fact it'll start to feed back even if you're just not covering all the strings with either your right hand or your left hand. So I mean even when you're playing between notes, you've got to deaden the other string so they'll start to ring. So it, 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 not everybody gets on with it. For me, it wasn't a big adjustment because uh, I'd messed around a lot with uh, guitar synths and they kind of require a similar kind of approach, not exactly the same, but they do require a kind of very detailed approach to playing. And so uh, 
So for me, I pretty much adjusted to it right away, but for some people, it's just not gonna suit their playing style at all. So before you start hacking into your guitar, and it does take some serious hacking into the guitar, uh, at least with this one, I had, it didn't fit in, and I had to uh, do quite a bit with it. But um, I would try one out before you start uh, putting it on your much beloved guitar, just in case uh, you find it doesn't, doesn't work for you. So yeah, that's a sustainer. It, it, it even works without the guitar turned on, without it even being plugged in. It works acoustically because there's a battery in there that runs a sustainer. And uh, it always reminds me of Nigel Tufnell on Spinal Tap with his Les Paul saying, listen to the sustain on this. And the guy says it's not plugged in. But yeah, that's exactly what you get <laughs> with a sustainer. Um, maybe you could show us how you access various parameters and adjust, and adjust them in real time, time in a live performance, performance setting. setting. Sure, yeah. Um, well, I use pedals. Um, so I've got a, a Roland FC300 here, um, which I use these two continuous controller pedals to control various things on the laptop. Um, so if I move this, you can see things moving on the screen there uh, and so forth. And then this is another pedal I also use to control, actually I use this one to control the, the, the RME, the volume on the RME. I don't always have this set up, sometimes I have other pedals, I have a couple of other pedals, that sometimes I have more controller pedals. But basically they are all linked up to, to main stage where um, I'm controlling any number of different parameters. On the guitar itself I've got this V-meter touch strip here and this allows me to, by moving my finger along it, I can control things on the laptop. This is USB, it goes into the laptop. Um, so again, you can see things moving on the screen when I move this because it's communicating that way. And it acts just like a pedal basically, except I can move it while I'm playing in a more fine-tuned way than I can do with a pedal, or I could do a pedal and this at the same time. So it just opens up more possibilities. With the pedals, I mean, for example, this pedal here does a whole bunch of things when I move it. It's not just moving one parameter, it's moving two or three parameters and then it, when it reaches a certain point at this stage it, it starts to move some other parameters which don't get moved earlier on in the in the the pedal uh pedal movement so yeah i guess i end up getting kind of complicated with my controllers just because i'll imagine a sound that i want and to think of how am i going to get that you know what am i going to need to get that in terms of uh plugins and and effects and how do I want that sound to change as I manipulate it with the controller? And uh, maybe something needs to move in reverse this way from the pedal, and then once it gets up past the halfway point, another thing needs to move the other way. And that's what really, for me, is great about, about main stage. And of course, um, there are other, other things like main stage. Um, Ableton, obviously, is the other one uh, that a lot of people use is that with these things it allows you to to do that it allows you to pretty much set up anything you can imagine um, in terms of controlling linking a controller to uh, a parameter on a uh, on a laptop and and what you've got i mean this is just a control interface which on main stage you can make your own interface which i like because i can make it show just what i want to see and hide everything else out of the way because um, if I'm on stage or even in the studio, I don't want to have to be looking at thousands of things. I just want to see just the things I need. Uh, but if I close this off, you can see that, you know, actually there's a mixing desk in here uh, with all kinds of plugins and things, each of which, you know, um, if you open it up, has other controls and so forth.